The nation's labor market continues to defy expectations. Weekly unemployment claims fell to 228,000 last week, a two-month low. The unemployment rate also slipped to 3.6 percent. Pandemic unemployment trends that set off alarm bells in recent years, things like early retirements, quiet quitting, and gender gaps in employment have slowly faded away. In fact, a New York Times article states those trends and others proved, quote, temporary or even illusory. Joining us now is Gina Smilek. She's a Federal Reserve and Econ Economy reporter for The Times and one of the article's authors. Good to have you back. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right, let's go through and knock some of these down. The wave of early retirement, what happened to that? That one was more illusory uh, than we thought it was. As it turns out, you know, we did see some folks in sort of older age groups leaving the labor market in big numbers at the onset of the pandemic. But that seems to be have been mostly out of health concerns. They didn't retire permanently. They kind of came right back in and they're working at pretty high levels right now. What about uh, quiet quitting? Quiet quitting, you know, this has been an interesting social phenomenon that we've seen a lot of chatter about, but actually the person who originally popularized the term quiet quitting has quit out loud now. He uh, quit his job for real and talked, posted quite an extensive TikTok about how he doesn't think just sort of skating by at work is the way of the future anymore. So, right. you know, the, the proponent himself has, has given up on quiet quitting. And you and Ben Castleman, who you co-wrote this with, have written about, uh, written about the fears of recession, particularly with white collar um, jobs. Where are we on that question? You know, you just can't see it on the data. You know, I think the jobless claims this morning are a great example of that. We're just seeing the jobs numbers come in really strong, pretty consistently, including in some of the very jobs categories where you would expect to see losses, where you would expect to, expect to see some weakening if that white collar recession story were real. You know, we it, it is certainly the case that we have some, seen some very headline grabbing layoffs at some big temp, tech companies. I think we're all very well aware of that. But those people seem to be shuffling into new jobs relatively quickly. And what about the she session that was that that did happen? I mean, everybody the, the jobs dropped, but then what happened to the she session? Yeah, absolutely. The she session was real at the outset, and people were worried that it was going to permanently scar the workforce for women in America. And what we saw is that women are actually now working. Women in their sort of prime working years are now working at the greatest rates they've ever been working. So it, it seems like the the sort of bounce back there was more than we had you know possibly hoped for. I think. And we've talked about this before, and this is what fascinated me about the articles, because in your, in your job covering the Fed, you have to cover an institution that makes guesses about what's going on in the economy. And then everybody listens to what they say and does a lot of things that affect everybody else's lives. What did you learn? What's, the, what's your sense about the humility required for understanding what's happening in the labor market, which matters so much to what the Fed does? I think, and you know, I'll, I'll take this back to myself personally, you know, I wrote about a lot of these trends as they were sort of becoming very prominent. And I think that it's just another example, and really our second example in the 21st century of you have to be so humble when you're thinking about the U.S. labor market, when you're sort of trying to guess what it might do next, because this is now twice in the last, you know, 15 years that we've seen a much stronger recovery in the job market than we thought that basically anybody in the consensus thought was possible. And your book, The Federal Reserve, takes on a new age of crisis. The book is, sorry, the book is limitless. The, Fed, the Federal Reserve takes on a new age of crisis. Is that what you're talking about, essentially, or is this kind of a in addition to what the Federal Reserve is already having to manage. Yeah, so much of what we're talking about right now is what I talk about in the book, just in the sense that when you look at what the Fed is doing, they have so much power, they have so much influence, they guide the economy so profoundly, but they're operating on some really sort of shaky assumptions sometimes. You know, it is important for them to be humble as they are making policy because they can really sort of dictate the fate of the entire economy based on some pretty bad assumptions if they're not paying close enough attention. And so I think that's something they've all been really grappling with over the last 15 years. And a good lesson for us to be humble as well, too. Gina Smilek, thank you so much for being here again. Thanks for having me.